When Money Dies by Adam Ferguson. Um, so I'll do this, this quick review. I actually got two uh, copies. There's a story behind that. But um, this is a good book to read for somebody who is interested in hyperinflation, devaluation, and how governments handle it and how people react to hyperinflation. Now, this is back in 1923. Germany had just lost World War One. They had to pay back a lot of reparations. The government, <clears throat> the government was um, printing a lot of money to to cover the expenses of the reparations that they had to pay back to the other countries and to keep the economy afloat. A lot of things happen with this hyperinflation. Uh, of course, by the currency being devalued, uh, it put them in, a, in an awkward spot in the world. You had uh, other people from other countries coming in, buying all of uh, Germany's uh, goods and, um, and services and real estate, food, cattle, stocks, so forth. The it was a lot of uh, resentment during that time with the with different uh, people with the government and also with other people. Like actually, it was a lot of resentment with uh, Jewish people during that time because the Jewish people had a lot of money then. They were actually able to buy a lot of the the current the well not the, they were actually able to use the currency and buy a lot of uh, commodities and assets and stuff like that. Because they had a lot of, they for whatever reason, you know, it's a lot, um, a lot of uh, thoughts on as far as how they still had a lot of money. But they were, it was a known thing during that time period, according to Adam Ferguson, for Jewish, for it to be known that Jewish people would come around, and they can, and they'll buy a lot of people like furs and silver and jewelry and stuff like that, and you can sell it off to a lot of um, Jewish people. They they had the money. Um, to be able to buy a lot of people assets and stuff. So and a lot of that actually played into a lot of resentment moving into uh, World War II and uh, when Hitler uh, came in, but that's, a, that's another story. And actually I'm going to do uh, different parts. I'm going to do a series of books going into that. But the uh, layout, what was going on in Germany at that time, you had the hyperinflation, and people didn't know exactly what to do. One of the things that was a, a good takeaway from it was the the money was was being inflated so fast that you could take like a loaf of bread that maybe cost a dollar one day, and then it was two dollars the next day. So what everybody did every time they got paid, they would immediately go out and spend all their money on all and on food and services or whatever. You know what I'm saying? In order to get it at the better price because the next day it was going to be higher. It was guaranteed it was going to be higher. So as soon as somebody got some money, they immediately went out and spent it. That was, um, and they did that with everything. So, and it was a, uh, it, it was just a, it, it just kept coming back to, so if you got the consumer going out buying and spending their money like that, you have the, just like the retail and the, and the, just the little mom and pop shops, they're keeping up with this demand, and then the only thing they can do with supply and demand, you have to raise your prices. So you go out and you raise your prices to, to be able to meet the demand because if demand is increased, then you have to raise your prices. You have to do it for a lot of different reasons, you know, but more so uh, because now it's costing you more. You know, it's costing you more, you know, because you have to keep going out and getting more, and then by the time you, you buy it, it's, it's more than what it, than, than what it was because everybody's price is moving. So, um, so, so you, you have that. Then on top of that, you have uh, people coming in from other uh, uh, countries buying up all of the goods and services and stuff because their money is worth more. Germany money is constantly being devalued. So they're taking all of the goods and services out and, and then leaving them with a whole bunch of more just after they did the uh, currency exchange, more German money. Got to the point where it was so bad <clears throat> That um, that they were using like wheelbarrows, as they all, as Adam was saying, they, they were using it was it was a, a phrase like they had to actually bring wheelbarrows full of money to pay for stuff. Now that's something. 
So with all that uh, going on, you have the, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Oh, then you have the pan reparations. They're inflating the currency. They're devaluing the currency by inflating, by hyperinflating the currency. And they're trying to keep everybody alive and afloat. One of the things that happened with the landlords was um, the landlords weren't able to pay their mortgages. So it's not like now where it's a lot of um, forbearances and even with the rent moratoriums and stuff like that. But with the landlords, they weren't able to cover their mortgages. By them not being able to cover their mortgages, the the tenants, the government actually, one of the things that the government did then, and you can even see now, and, they, and Adam had made a point to say that the first thing when a government wants to take over, the very first thing they have to do, they have to control the real estate. They have to control people being put out in the street. So they immediately come in and take over that, and they stop all evictions and, and, um, and, and, and help and assist in rents. Now, the government can't cover the entire rent. They'll cover a portion of it and stop the eviction. So the landlords weren't getting their full rents. They were getting a portion of it, but they couldn't do anything about it. They just had to take it. Meanwhile, as inflation is going up, the, the, they can only raise, they can only, the, the rent that they were getting paid was based on what the government said that they were gonna pay. So they have to wait for the government to, okay, well, we can adjust it and pay me, pay you guys a little bit more for rent. But in the meanwhile, like I said, the, 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 the um, the cost of everything is going up. It's going up faster than what they can adjust for. Not only that, you had um, the tax situation. Like a lot of, it got to a point to where, I think it was 90, matter of fact, 90% of the taxes were paid by the, the working class. So because the working class, of course, their money was getting taken right out of their checks where everyone else, you know, the the uh, businesses, you know, they have to, of course, they have to file their taxes. So by the time they were about to file the taxes, everything had changed. So they had to go back and adjust everything all over again because the money had changed. The only people that really made out was the people who had land and were able to hold it some kind of way. Because, like, if you have a mortgage and you're paying, I don't know, let's say around a, a number at that point, Let's just say the numbers they were using, like you're paying like 300, that's, that's been a whole lot. Or like I say $100, even 50. <clears throat> that 50 that you had to pay, that doesn't change. So even though the inflation is going up, somebody, if you're locked in on a mortgage with a small amount like that, <clears throat> you're still only paying, you know what I'm saying, that small amount. So anybody that had locked in um, assets like that, Hyperinflation actually is good for them um, because that mortgage never goes up. You know what I'm saying? Where everything else is going up, what you actually have to pay doesn't go up. Actually, hyperinflation actually helps you because the more money that's in circulation, the less of a, of a percentage that you're actually paying for your mortgage based on the amount of money that you're getting in. Anyway, so you have that. You have other stunts going on. You, uh, Hitler, Hitler tried his, uh, had to take over the government in 23 because of the economy was in such a, a, a free fall and people were losing faith in the government. So he tried, what it's called, uh, I always get it wrong when I say it, the uh, beer putsch. Yeah, I, I hear it say, uh, I've heard guys say it two different ways uh, when I try, anyway, but, it's, but I'm actually gonna do that, that uh, a review on that book as well. Uh, and that um, what happened in 23, that's when Hitler had, um, tried to take over the government, went to jail, and actually when Hitler got out of jail, he actually got, he got stronger after getting out of jail, so, but that's, uh, that's, that's another review I'll do. Um, so what they ended up doing, while everything is, is crazy, and this is going, they actually ended up adopting another currency called the uh, Renton Mark, I believe I'm saying that right, the Renton Mark. Now, the Renton Mark, they had to, they, people got tired of paper money and, and being back being backed by nothing. So they had to use something to back it. They couldn't use gold because they were sending that out to the allies to pay for the reparations. So what they did was they actually used uh, land. They actually used agricultural and business land in order to pay, or in order to back up the, the renting mark. So people gained confidence in it 
They calmed everything down, and then they ended up going to another currency that was backed by gold later. But it was interesting that they used land, mainly agricultural businesses, mainly those two, you know, to um, to gain confidence in for people to gain confidence in that currency, the Renton mark. So, it, but the takeaways from this book is that one, how people reacted with hyperinflation, how governments reacted and how they, how they uh, handled the situation with hyperinflation. Because actually the German government thought that they can just keep printing money in order to solve the problem it didn't. It actually, you know, um, it actually made it worse. Um, what else? Another takeaway is uh, a, a little bit too. It went into uh, because you never hear uh, uh, with the history in Germany, with what happened in World War Two and and uh, um, and what happened with the with the Jewish people in Germany and that whole and that whole craziness. It, um, they never, I always was interested in how did it build up to that point? And actually what happened in World War I and what happened after World War I explains more of what happened with the, the Jews in World War II than the stories you hear about World War II. It's almost like that's the after effect, but it was a build up from World War I after World War I and II because they thought that the Jewish people had sold them out, you know, during World War I. They had a whole bunch of money. They had the banks. They were in a position to buy up a lot of German um, citizens' land, assets, commodities, and stuff like that after World War One and during this whole hyperinflation, which it was a lot of resentment during that, that time. But anyway, but I'll get more into that. But that book, the book covered that as well. But um, but the main things was how money works and how in hyperinflation really works and, and I don't want to give the whole book away because um, you, it'd be no reason for anybody ever to, um, to, to, to purchase the book and it's a really good read for somebody that's interested in seeing just those twists and turns of hyperinflation and the ups and the downs and how the government was reacting how people were reacting the banks and all of that it was good it sucks you in so uh, again uh, when money dies Adam Ferguson KSK book review um, any questions, any, if y'all want to talk about it, put it in the comments, uh, course up, subscribe, like any comments, please do that. All right. Y'all.